All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday. I know we got a baseball game coming up. Let's do this. Huh? Three, two, one. Yo, what's going on? Welcome. Where you were? Um, uh, what a day! What a day! I tried to go live earlier today. It, it was just kind of one thing after another. Had some car problems. Had to take my wife to work. Uh, picked the kids up early from school. I mean, just the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. But we're here finally able to go live. I do appreciate you guys. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, you know, after 530 is not really my ideal time on a Friday, but here we are. That's fine. That's fine. We're going to make it work. I know baseball's around the corner, so I don't want to, I don't want the show to go on too long, but uh, Goth Reba is my everything. How'd you get away with Radiohead? Yeah, it's uh, it's not Radiohead. I mean, it is, but it's it's uh, not Radiohead. I don't know. We'll see if YouTube flags it. But it, it was on the uh, unflaggable list of songs, and I was like, of course I'm going to go with that. Of course. All right, you guys saw there at the end the card spin. Those are the winners for last month. That was Harlan Richter, who got the Wicklander card, Michael Conley, who got the Jason Peters card, MJ501, who's getting the Steve Little card, and John Goodman is getting the Traylon Burks autographed card. Again, if you are a legendary status member this month, you have a shot at winning former Arkansas player Alex Collins autographed card, so make sure you're a part of that. We've got some other cards we're going to give away. I got some more Wicklander cards. Shout out to his dad, who sent me a whole bunch. I got some more cards today. I got my hands on some new ones. I will uh, be showing those off at a later date. I'm pretty excited about a few of them. Pretty cool. Uh, what's up, Ty? I hope you're doing well. What's up, Farrell? Hope, hope all is well. All right. Again, like, like the stream, share the content, and if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. All right. Man, oh, man. We have a little bit to discuss. That's for sure. Calpari... Uh, I mean, it's still it still almost feels like a fever dream. It's kind of crazy. But here we are. Calpari is head hog. Excited about that. We have an update today, by the way. Arkansas, the Arkansas UAPB game has been moved to Thursday, August 29th, 6 30 PM. That will be on ESPNU. I I hey, whatever. Thursday night opener. I'm all about it. The sooner we get to football, the better. I don't care. I mean, I, I know that football is not what anybody wants to discuss right now. But we've got the red white scrimmage tomorrow. I'm gonna I'm gonna lay some things out for you, what to kind of look for, the things I'm gonna be looking for. That'll be towards the bottom of the of the live show. Arkansas plays on the road. There's some fascinating games this weekend, and I think some of them are already in game two. Vanderbilt, Texas A and M. South Carolina is in Gainesville to play Florida. Don't know what to make of Florida. Missouri at Georgia. Kentucky at Auburn. LSU at Tennessee. You never know what's going to happen there. Mississippi State and Ole Miss. That ought to be a real shit show. And then Arkansas in Tuscaloosa, Alabama against the number 25 ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. Arkansas, I picked the sweep, but Alabama's pretty decent. They're pretty good. From what I understand, they're worthy of the top 25 ranking. You know when you're Arkansas, when you're the number one team in the country, you're going to get everybody's best. That's just part of it, especially when you got that number one. And Arkansas has a reputation in baseball, okay? They may not have won at all, but they are really, really good under Dave Van Horn, and they have been for a while. So they're going to get Alabama's best. I think Arkansas sweeps. God only knows. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that works out. Vanderbilt and A&M is going to be a really interesting matchup. And Kentucky at Auburn, Kentucky might be legit. Kentucky might be a pretty good ball club. They uh, Last weekend, just to get you guys kind of caught up on what these guys have done, outscored Alabama, who's ranked 23-3 to last weekend. Uh, yeah, Kentucky's pretty good. And I've heard some people say they might be close to Arkansas in better in some areas, close to them in others, but better them in other areas. Uh, that could be that and the A and M. Those are going to be two interesting matchups when they happen. 
Uh, Arkansas has – so we got Alabama, and then you got Texas Tech, a couple of midweek games. I appreciate the retweets on Twitter, by the way. Thank you, Austin. Uh, Texas Tech on Tuesday. That's at 7 p.m. on a Tuesday night for baseball. Too late. That's too late. Shouldn't be – 6.30 at the very latest. Uh, 7 p.m. Because that's going to be – I mean, you're talking about – if you're going to the game, hell, you're not getting home till till 11 o'clock, 10.30, depending on how far out you are. And then Wednesday, you've got them for the for – the, uh, for the following day at 4 p.m., much better. You're on the road in South – you're on the road in uh, at South Carolina. That'll be in Columbia. UAPB next Tuesday. Florida's going to be in Fayetteville. Missouri State, two game get two games there. And then at Lexington, Kentucky, which is starting to look like, yeah, this could be – this could be a legit – a legit uh, matchup here for Arkansas. Kentucky right now they are twenty eight and five with a twelve and one conference ranking. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. They uh, they took two out of three against Missouri. They swept Georgia. They swept Ole Miss. They have a loss to Samford, but that's a midweek game. I told you guys midweek games anything can happen. They lost to Samford nine to seven, but then uh, yesterday they beat Auburn six to five at Auburn. So we'll see how the rest of that series goes this weekend. Yeah, so I like Arkansas there. I think I think you know. I mean, I'm talking about for Alabama this weekend. I don't know about when they play at Lexington. Kentucky got swept by Arkansas. He he says camo. Uh, Ty tried to hook hook you up with a new sponsor. Did Wes reach out? No. Nope, sure didn't. I, I'm gonna be real. I haven't reached out to anybody for that for that sponsorship spot. I haven't. I haven't reached out to anybody. Um, I. Once things slow down a little bit, next week I'm going to try my best to maybe uh, cold call some people. Made it just in time. What's going on, Josh French? How you doing? Shout out, Chicken Man. That's right, John Tyson. He is the man. <laughs> he is beloved by the entire state right now. He is beloved. By the way, College Baseball Nation has their projected field of 64. They do have Arkansas hosting. Um, they have them, obviously, as an automatic qualifier. Clemson. Texas A&M, Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, Oregon State, Kentucky round out their top eight. Duke at nine, Vanderbilt 10, ECU as a as an AQ, as an automatic qualifier at 11, Oklahoma State as an automatic qualifier at 12, Florida State at 13, Wake Forest 14, Coastal Carolina 15, Nebraska as an AQ at 16. Um Two seeds, you got you got several more SEC schools involved there. Georgia, South Carolina, Mississippi State. We're a long ways away, but that's it's you know, it's fun to read that stuff. It's good, right? It's just a little bit of college baseball porn, if you will. <laughs> uh Kapesky, I appreciate you, man. I don't know if you're being for reals or not, but uh tell Wes, yeah, shoot me an email or DM me, whatever. So getting caught up here all right it's been a crazy day it's been a crazy day carter knox referenced the chicken man on his instagram account account could that be a hint yeah i i feel like we'll just go ahead and segue right into cal those hogs we'll just segue right into it they're gonna have to work and work quick i mean you've got a lot of spots to fill don't know if anyone's gonna come back there's been some there's been some hope that battle or mark someone will come back from that team last year the good parts of it we know Brazil is gone he's hired an agent that's a done deal and I know a lot of you would probably be fine with him just finishing it up wrapping it up going away that's fine I kind of wanted him back I think in a in a proper system you know I I, I, just, I just think in a, in a especially with an offensive more offensive-minded guy that Cal is who's willing to run set plays. I just feel like Brazil could could flourish. <laughs> I mean, how many guys of that size come along at Arkansas and then look at how many of that size and that athletic ability with that ceiling, which I think he has a pretty high ceiling. How many of those guys just flourish under Cal at Kentucky? I mean, it's just a, it's a pretty long list. Um, you know, Lengthy can move moves up and down the floor when he wants to pretty well. 
I don't think Cal would, would settle for Brazil walking around out in the perimeter on offense or defense when you see him float out. I don't think you would see Brazil do that a whole lot. Not as much as he did under Musselman. Under Musselman, he just did what he wanted. That's what drove me crazy. He just, wait around, out in the perimeter, just becoming another guy. You're just another guy. What are you doing? That's not why the NBA was so interested in you. So I think he would have done really well with Cal Parry. I really do. So we'll see if anyone comes back. There's a whole, there's a lot of belief that that he's got a legit shot at several former players and commits. We're waiting. We have his coaching staff. It sounds like we we have a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like. This is coming from Matt Norlander of CBS Sports. Cal will be bringing most of his staff to Arkansas. Chuck Martin, who. I hate to say the name, who, who coached under Dana Altman. He joined that staff, uh, the Oregon staff, at 22. Uh, I think he – yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he joined – pretty sure he joined Cal in 23, in the summer of 23. That I might have read that wrong. Orlando Antigua, who's a former head coach, by the way, he was an associate under uh, Cal Parry with the Wildcats from 21 to 24, was also the head coach of South Florida for two and a half seasons. Orlando Antigua, I think, is one that some folks wanted to circle. Ronald Ronald Coleman is another one. James Bruiser Flint and his son, Brad Calipari, uh, all expected to join Coach Cal. He'll be in a developmental role. At least that's the belief if they come along with, with Coach Cal. Um, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done. I don't think it, it's, it's a given that Cal... He's got to get the staff here if they're not already here. I think, well, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate because I have, I, like I said, the last couple of days, last 24 or so hours have been kind of crazy. So I'm a little bit behind in some areas. But uh, I think they want to get the staff here pretty quickly and they want to hit the ground running with recruiting. I'm still in wait and see mode when it comes to what Cal does in the portal. There's a lot of people think with this NIL money, why wouldn't you want to go out and grab the best that the portal has to offer? Some older guys, you know, he referenced, he talked a little bit about, you know, teams with guys with older players, you know, 25 years old. He was 25, that guy. That's how we lost. Juggling balls juggling balls. It never occurred to me just how Italian that guy really is. Juggling balls, I tell you. I'm just waiting for him to do that. I'm waiting for we'll make him an offer he can't refuse. I'm just waiting for that. Oh. Mm. I love it. I love doing the Italian accent. You know, I used to do a good a good Donald Trump. Uh, used to do a good Joe Biden, which was just me wandering off camera. <laughs> Uh, but Calipari is going to be fun. I'm going to have fun with that. I'm not going to lie. Joggling balls. That's what we do. I went to the locker room to talk to the team. Guess what? There's no team. There's no team. Uh, and we actually have great in-state talent for basketball. So pretty important. We What? 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 Uh, Kentucky had to settle for Mark Pope. Yeah, I'm going to get to that in just a second. I, I've got a lot of fun with that. Mike just gave me a come on, bro. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pronounce things however I want, Mike. I'm just gonna call him Coach Cal Calipari. Uh, Cyril coming soon too. Says Camo. Camo, don't 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 you dare be positive. Don't you dare be positive, Camo. OG Ty. What's up, Pigpin? How you doing, man? Uh, let's see. How are you in a Tusk Talk Live but not continuing the conversation on Discord? I promise I'm nicer there than I am on Twitter, says John Haas. There you go. Join our join our Discord. Yeah, you need to be in there, especially if you're a Patreon supporter. Widely believe Brewer and Payne will fill the last two assistant spots. Yeah, I, I, you've got to for in-state. I guess that's what you were talking about. For in-state, 
you know, especially if you want to, you know, there, there's some talent in Northwest Arkansas, but definitely down in Central Arkansas. It's where you want to be. It's where you want to be. Thanks to the chicken man. Carter Knox. Oh, I already read that. Let me scroll down. Hold on. No must disrespect will be tolerated. Uh, yeah, so Camo says must put us in shape for him to be here. Stop. Who? Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking about? Hold on. What? Yeah, listen. I think it got a little hot. I think I think it got a little rough here for Musselman and he left. I think he faced his first season of adversity and he left. I'm not. Th- I, I'm. I'm. I'm not saying I'm not thankful for what he did, especially those three years when you went on these am- amazing runs. He is the reason why you were able to to get Coach Cal, no doubt. But I said this weeks ago, guys, months ago. If he's leaving, the only way I see it is, yeah, it would be to go home. Sure, there is that. But guys, he could. Why did he leave? Why did he leave Nevada to begin with? There's some jobs out west that opened up, and you're going to tell me like USC is this this end all be all of jobs? I mean, come on, get real. USC is not even second fiddle to UCLA. You're you're like the sixth biggest act. Granted, it's a big deal. Los Angeles is a big town. I get it. It's beautiful there. You got family. His mom's, I think, down uh, down in San Diego. I understand that. I just think he got hot and he left. I think there. I think he probably was a little bit unhappy with NIL. I think there might have been some stuff. I, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not saying I've heard this. I just wonder, especially with how willing John Tyson was with the NIL, and now there's rumors of NIL trying to compete or these money bags trying to compete against each other. I kind of wonder if Musk didn't rub some of these guys the wrong way. So things got tough. He saw it as this the only way I'm going to be able to compete is with NIL. And then he left. I never liked his offensive philosophy here, but I am. I mean, he's the best thing to happen to Arkansas, at least football, in the 2000s. No doubt. In the 21st century, he deserves that credit. However, it got tough. I don't think he was super happy with NIL, and he saw an opening and an opportunity to go back home. We'll never know. I mean, you know, and I'm I'm very – it was really cool to see him give praise. It really was. It was neat for him to say the things that he said about Arkansas while he was at uh, – shortly after joining USC. I, but, again, I just – I don't know. I, I said this months ago. He's running away. Things got tough, and he ran. I don't know what to tell you. Um, and I, I if, if that truly is what happened – I don't know that I want a guy like that as my head coach. Like, as soon as things get tough, you're just, you're just going to leave? Yeah, he left Nevada. He was already out west. This is why I've had a hard time believing all of that. And there's other jobs that would have opened up. He knows that. There are so many jobs out west. Um, what are you just talking about? You know, sir, I mean, I know. I realize USC is a P5 school. I get that. But, again, their basketball, you know, that's not a sport that they're known for <laughs> over there. Uh I think their baseball program might be more prestigious. I don't know, but I just know I've had a hard time buying that. That that's the only reason. Oh, he left because his mom and because family. Bro, why did he wait? Why did he wait till after the year when thing when sh- when when shit hit the fan? You know that he thought the success was going to be better. He, I'm pretty sure he thought the NIL was going to be better. So uh, that's that's fine. Not everyone's going to agree with that, and and I expect probably a couple of DMs over that comment. But I don't really care. I don't really give a shit. I'm happy he was here. I'm thankful we got what we got out of him. He is why you were able to hire Coach Cal, um, and it showed too. I think what he did was show not just other coaches, not the college basketball world, that Arkansas could be competitive. He showed donors that that was possible. I just think again the donors. Uh, I just wonder if there was some kind of beef or, or they just didn't like the guy. I don't know. And it, also, like, yeah, Cal, if, if Cal is going to come here, if Coach Cal's going to come here and you could talk him into coming here and you're John Tyson, of course you're going to give him, you know, you could buy into what Cal's done, especially with his resume. He's a Hall of Fame coach. He already is. You know, three-time coach of the year, multiple Final Fours, multiple destinations, all the stuff that people want to complain about, like, well, he did, you know, look what he did to Memphis after he left. Look at UMass after he left. Okay, fair, but guess what? 
It's legal now. I mean, that's just that's just outright truth. It's legal. So, you know, and here's the other thing, too. With people that are upset about how Musk left things, guys, that's normal now. That's normal. So don't go throwing heat at Musk over that either. What's about to happen to Kentucky, or I, I don't know how many of those guys. I know the uh, couple of the natives, Kentucky natives, are going to stick around. That's normal. When a coach leaves, it's mass exodus. That's just what it is. It's weird that like it just happened to Arkansas, and we're like, oh, look, this is all Musselman's fault. No, it's not. I, this That was going to happen no matter what. I guarantee if Mike Anderson, if the portal was around then and NIL and all that stuff, I guarantee you those guys would have bolted. You know, I guarantee you. And I think actually – Back then, you could legally or under uh, NCAA bylaws because when you have a coaching change, I'm pretty sure there was some kind of uh, there was there was something a part of the rules that said if your coach leaves, you're eligible to leave or whatever. But I guarantee you, it would have been it, had it been like what it is today. Yeah, you would have seen a mass exodus, and those players loved playing for Mike. I could tell you that right now. They loved playing for Mike Anderson. We got a super chat, Cal. Cal, he's our man. If he can't do it, no one can. Appreciate the super chat, Terser. Thank you. Ty, if it's a close game, shouldn't Pittman be fired after the game? Wait. Again, what are you talking about? What do you mean? If it's a close game. Oh, with Pine Bluff. Oh, well, I mean, they won't, Johnny. They wouldn't fire him, but it certainly wouldn't be a good sign of what's to come, right? It wouldn't be a good sign of what's to come after that. Hey, we got a whole bunch of you in here. Again, make sure you hit the like button the hell was that hit the like button subscribe if you're new i know it's uh, outsiders are not getting pushed to this channel but please you can help me fight the algorithm share the content that's how you do it and uh yeah check out discord it's awesome discord has been it's been lit it's been crazy so go check it out. We've got a. We, if you're a Patreon supporter, you're going to have access to the uh, basketball, in the, the basketball Patreon chat, football Patreon, the portal. Listen, they got five spots left, and you bet your ass. I'm gonna. I'm already. I've already got names. I'm highlighting, and I'll. I'll be. Uh, I'll be fully. Well, I say fully. I'll be as kept up with that as I can be. I post their stats if they have them, and PFF numbers if they have them. So you'll get a pretty good picture of what Arkansas's gaining. And sometimes there's extra notes with these players. These are just targets I do this for. And then obviously the players that commit, they'll, they'll be uh, added onto the list. That Again, you have access to that if you're a Patreon supporter. So, yeah. Um, it's weird how fast football season is getting here. Only three more months. Wait, May, June, July. I mean, close enough. <laughs> Four, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be here before you know it. I love that they push that game up, man. The sooner the better, right? Um, all right. We do have Kentucky's new head coach. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do. Where's the... Hold on. So, interesting that it's uh, that it's that is it is a former Kentucky player, Pope, whose record is not great. His postseason his postseason play or postseason coaching job he did at BYU was not great. The guy runs a five-out offense. I think it's kind of similar to what Nate Oates does in a way. It's like that – I don't know if it's quite three and D. I know I was talking to somebody about him not long ago. I'll just – I say not long ago, like two days ago. His name popped up somewhere, and they said his style of offense might be more exciting for Kentucky, and it might draw more guys in. He is a former NBA player. Uh, just with that alone, he's going to have some NBA connections. So – Hang on just a second. I have. I don't know where it went. We have his. But I'm going to try. 
Oh, there, well, there it was. You saw it for a second. You guys have got to watch this. You guys have to watch this. Hang on, let me... Uh, I don't know if it'll give me sound. Why isn't it giving me sound? You guys might be able to hear it. Hang on. And you fans, but I'm going to try. C A T S Cats! Cats! Oh no! Green Day! Uh, that was it. That was, <laughs> that was him celebrating. And if you notice something, watch this. And you fans. Watch. But I'm going to try. Can you see it? Tell me if you guys can see this. C-A-T. He's doing this in, in BYU. He's doing it in their arena. <laughs> He's doing this in their arena, bro. Oh my god. We're gonna play it. S Cats Cats Oh no Green Day <laughs> Oh my god that is uh that's magic is what that is. That's magic. That's their uh that's their new head coach. You guys <laughs> Oh man He's listen. I keep I keep reading. He's like uh, he's he's good. Like he's a solid coach. He just couldn't get you know BYU from 2019. He he only made it to the uh, tournament once. In his first year there, they went 24 and eight. That was when uh, postseason was canceled due to COVID. His next year he goes 20 and seven. 2021, 22 he goes 24 and 11. And then last year he goes or season before last he finishes 19 and 15. Last season, he finished 23-11. and 11. Okay, I'm sorry. He made tournament twice. My bad. He made the NCAA tournament twice. He did get to the NIT quarterfinals in 21-22. His overall coaching record at BYU is 110-52. I mean, that's not a horrible number. It's not like you can go to BYU and be great. But, you know, he, he helped. From what I understand, they, they liked him over there. I still can't believe they let him do that. In their own arena. How long will Kentucky coach be there? I say three years, says Grant uh, Toynton. I don't know. I'd be shocked if it was more than two or three. He's going to have so much pressure. BYU get, getting crapped on. I still can't believe this. I still can't believe they let this guy do that in their arena. That is mind-boggling. Insane. All right. Hey, I see all you guys with the uh, retweets. I see you. I see you on the Twitters. Thank you. Um, what did Kapaski say? Pope was a desperation hire that doesn't usually turn out well. We Arkansas football fans know that. It does feel like something similar to a Sam Pittman hire. And by the way, they told us they were going to get Scott Drew out of Baylor. They were going to get Dan Hurley. And they end up with with Mark Pope with that video. I mean, God bless the guy for trying to... Maybe he was trying to be ironic and funny. But to do it in their own arena. Insanity. Just crazy. Oh, good times though, huh? Good times. All right. Red, white scrimmage. What are we at? Man, we just crossed 30-minute mark. We're doing good. I got a lot to say about this red-white scrimmage. So, I did not miss a single practice. Patreon supporters got videos after, I think, every single practice except one. And that one practice, if I recall, I, I was unable to upload. I don't remember what happened. I was having some issues, so I just it failed to upload. And I don't even know where the – I mean, Patreon lost the video, I guess. So, we got every single post uh, practice in spring camp. You guys, Patreon supporters, got those reactions first. You know, and I don't want to give a final, final takeaway from all of spring camp until next week, but I will say there there are a couple of things, or at least there's one thing that that stood out the most, and I think I repeated it in those Patreon videos I don't know how many times. It was the physicality in which the secondary practiced with. I mean, they were physical. They were they were even maybe maybe that's how they're gonna make up for the lack of real 
high caliber talent is is the physicality in which they want to play with. Maybe that's how they do it. Like you're, you, of course, you want them to cover really good, right? Like we want them to be good at covering. That for sure is something. But maybe that's the other part of what they can do really well is play physical. They were very physical. That stood out to me. I watched them. I probably dedicated. I don't know. They're probably the third most, uh, maybe fourth most of the groups that I watched it's probably in there, right? And we got we got two days a week plus a couple Saturdays in there, and of course we're going to get tomorrow. Noon, noon, 12 o'clock, scrimmage. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, was, I was pleasantly surprised with, with how – and they were letting them play physical. Now, obviously, you can't – anybody in a green shirt or a black jersey, green jersey, black jersey, you couldn't tackle. But they were willing, you know. And I hope that translates onto the field during fall and, and once uh, that, that week one, that Thursday night game happens against UAPB. I hope we see that. Saw a lot of knockdown balls. Jalen Braxton, I mean, it seemed like he was just, I don't know. He was, I was very impressed with, with him. And that shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. You know, especially with the kind of, uh, what kind of year he had last season. Scroll down here. Ty Broham, what's up? I'm Bias Brim. How you doing, man? DVH the goat. I'm I'm hoping we we stay healthy. Is he? Yeah, 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 yeah. They got to get through it. Feels like Chad Morris. It does feel like that kind of well, especially for a uh, a program like Kentucky to hire an up and comer like that. I'm sure at another gig, I could see him landing at like a few years down the road, maybe a Vanderbilt, South Carolina. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Oklahoma State down the road, you know. I know it's out of the out of the SEC, but yeah, I love all the shit talk on social media. How about my boy? How about my boy, unbiased Brim, getting all this attention with his videos that he made? Shout out to Brim, way to go, man! I see you. You're killing it on Twitter. You guys go follow him on Twitter. Go do it. He's the man. Uh, Pope looking like a tryhard. Oh, come on now. Not not this guy. And you fans. But I'm going to try. C-A-T-S. Cats. Cats. Oh, no. Not that guy. <laughs> I just dropped some uh, positive. I just dropped some positive to offset the negative. Yeah, there's so much. Little old Arkansas. Little old Arkansas winding up with Cal. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Kentucky will be Villanova post Jay Wright. Oh, yeah. Mm. Something else. It is something else. All right. So with scrimmage, with the scrimmage tomorrow, there are some things that I, again, that I noticed. I think you guys, it's something you ought to look out for in the red white scrimmage. By the way, I'll be there. I'll be down in the stands. I'll be down. I'll be down there, you know, hanging out. Feel free. I'm hard to miss. I'm tall and fat. Um, <laughs> one. So here's something linebackers, right? Let's start there. Linebackers. Keep an eye on what's happening there. Okay. I do have concern about a quality of, of uh, lack of quality there quality depth and the overall ceiling of that group. And I, I don't think that should also, I don't think that comes as a surprise to anybody. If, if you've, if you've listened to me talk about this, especially Patreon supporters, I've talked about this a few times. I don't, I just don't know. And I'm not the only guy that's been at practice. That'll tell you that it's not a diss. It's just, I don't, I don't know the ceiling of the younger guys. I don't think it's very high. If I'm being honest, that it, that's not to say that some of these guys are incapable of surprising you. Carson Dean is someone who he just he just looks good in the jersey, man. He looks the part. He looks like an SEC linebacker. Um, seen him make some plays here and there, but rarely does that group stand out. I, and I'm talking about I'm even talking about Xavier Sori. He has I'm pretty sure he's broken up some passes. He's made some pretty good stops in the backfield, especially early on in in uh, spring camp. When they would do uh, eleven on eleven, you know, fastball, they're kind of mini scrimmages, if you will. 
where the where the ones get three plays or, or sometimes beyond that. And uh, we saw we actually got to see quite a bit of them scrimmaging and and uh, or or again fastball right. We saw a lot of seven on seven, but s- the linebackers in eleven on eleven just did. I don't know, man. If I if I had to grade the group that I'm most concerned with, it would probably start there. Like if I'm EA and I'm making college football, I don't know that I put any of those cats above 74, 76, maybe because of Sori's past, being a former five star and a guy that transferred in from Georgia, maybe. You're kind of giving him the benefit of the doubt because he he at least has a pretty good rap sheet. Uh, Brad Spence, number 22, keep an eye on him. He's made some plays. And, again, that's not to say that tomorrow maybe the linebackers ball the hell out. But I there's just nothing about that group that, that stands out so far. I do think they need to get into the portal and grab them, not just one, but probably two guys. And I'm not talking about – Guys are going to compete for the three and the two spot. I want guys that are going to push the ones if you could find them. Hopefully you get an NIL push like basketball did, an infusion of cash. Uh, I, I mean, if we haven't heard about it by now, who knows? But, you know, that portal, that window is going to be open for a little bit, so who knows? Caden Henley, number 44, the uh, sophomore out of Shiloh. I like him. I do. I like him. I think in the right system, Caden Henley could be a beast. Uh, he is a local kid. You know, I'm going to get accused of being biased. I'm a Fayetteville kid, okay? So lay off. Uh, but Shiloh, you know, they'll produce some some pretty – I mean, they've produced some pretty good talent over the years, or at least guys that are worthy of getting recruited by SEC schools. Uh, Caden Henley is among that group. I think he's among one of those better Shiloh Christian kids. Um, 6'3", 232 pounds. He fills the jersey out nice. He, he makes – he can make plays. I think he's a capable player. Uh, where's the other one? I said uh, Alex Sanford, number 20, 6'1", 226 pounder. I like him. So there, there's some pieces there. I just don't really know what their ceilings are. I don't – and it's, it's just not a whole lot there that stood out for me. And, again, I'm not saying they were bad, that, you know, they're going to be crappy. And this is – just from what I could tell, I don't know where to put them. But right now I would say they're going to be – they're not going to get the benefit of the doubt probably from EA when that game comes out in mid-July – and right around the time of my birthday. I'm excited for that. And, and I don't know that you're going to see many of these guys make, make the uh, short list for all conference, even the ones that go all the way to four. I just don't th- – and I, and I think there's, there's, some, there's some reasoning for that. Obviously, the SEC is probably one of the premier linebacker conferences in college football, but also because I just don't know what to expect here. Nobody really shined. I will say, I uh, saw a lot of tip balls. I think Alex Sanford was one of those who could cover the middle of the field quite nicely. Brad Spence with that, uh, with that six, two and a half frame, you know, but again, it is a, it's an area at, at the very least, it's an area of concern. And I think they need to hit up a couple more guys out of the portal. Uh, and that's again, no disrespect to the current guys on the roster. I just, again, don't know what the hell they have there. The defensive front. I want you to keep an eye on what they do tomorrow. Watch for multiple looks. We saw them with the three front a couple of t- uh, several times, uh, where at times you have the defensive end standing up. You might see a defensive end. They've been working, and I uploaded this video to uh, Discord. They had defensive ends working on uh, on doing dropping back into zone coverage. Like they'll have them drop out, almost like they're watching the line of scrimmage, maybe they're looking for a little RPO, maybe they're looking for those quick dump-off throws to the tight ends or the running backs out in the flats, uh, or just that, you know, a little bit beyond the line of scrimmage. We saw them working on that a little bit, so I wonder if we're going to see defensive ends flatten out a little more and see them spread out a little more and then maybe dropping back into coverage. Not something I think we saw a lot of last year. Um, Keep an eye on the Albany transfer, Junkaj. Junkaj. Watch him. He's raw. He's raw, man. He's got that strength. Try not to make eye contact with him if you're at the game. He might beat you up. Not that I saw him do anything like that. He just has that. He's just, he looks like someone who just wants to stomp a mud hole in your face. He looks angry. <laughs> he, I think sometimes he's capable of playing like that, kind of like that Steve Austin. That Stone Cold Steve Austin, that look. Like, don't mess with that dude. Don't make eye contact with him. Just, hey, you made a good play. Hey, all right. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. Now, he seems like a good kid. 
I think uh, I'd like to see him around for a couple of years, see what he's capable of. Um, all right, from an offensive standpoint, there is a little bit here, and I overheard Petrino. Now I spent in the beginning, the beginning of spring camp, quite a bit watching the quarterbacks, watching Petrino, as everybody was, right, rightfully so. Petrino's back; it's our first bit of, you know, Bobby Petrino working with the offense, and and I listened to him a lot, and then. Even when you started to see the media spread out, I still would kind of wander as close as I could to the quarterbacks, even though they were more to the middle of the field. I overheard him, and I have it quoted here, uh, overheard Bobby Petrino multiple times to tell his quarterbacks to throw the go route, quote-unquote. His quarterbacks during 7-on-7 or 11-on-11 fastball threw a lot of check down throws to tight ends or wide outs or running backs, running uh, either digs, dig routes, slants, quick in routes, which is why we heard so much from the tight ends through camp. How often did you guys hear me talk about Varky's gums and Luke has and some of the other tight ends and, and the running backs getting involved in the passing game? I think a lot of it, either receivers weren't getting open, and at times that was still the case, or the quarterbacks, all of them, were settling for the check down throws. And I think it got on Petrino's nerves a little bit. Now, a go route – Maybe you're asking, what exactly is a go route? Go route. It's similar, I think, to the fade route. You're just basically running to the end zone. It's just a straight. You're just beelining. There's no, there's no extra motion involved with the wide receiver. You're just sprinting down the field as fast as you can. And if I remember right, the play that he was talking about, um, it was, uh, it was, it was two of the quarterbacks there that he was griping up. It looked like he was getting after Malachi. And what happened was. Centennia moved over in motion over to the slot position on the right side of the line of scrimmage. And what, you know, and you could obviously, you could tell the defense ran with him, right? The nickel ran with Centennia's, which identifies your what? I feel like Coach Cal asking the audience questions. Which, what does that mean, huh? It means you're in man coverage. So now you've identified the defense. And I don't remember if Centennia got open. I want to say there's a safety floating around the top. It might not have been there. As soon as he came back, there were a couple of quarterbacks in that group, and Bobby Petrino, that's when he shouted, throw the go to 16, throw the go route. So I saw a lot of check down throws. I saw a lot of check down, even in seven on sevens. Some of that is I think the secondary has improved. I do believe they have. Doesn't mean we're going to see that this fall, but from what I could tell through fall camp, the secondary seemed to always have the, not always, but to, be the side of the ball that looked the best. Most times, I would argue. Maybe someone else would have a different opinion. I don't know. Go ask Mason Cho, Trey Biddy, Tom Murphy, Bob Holt was there a little bit, Otis Kirk. But I, I felt like the secondary mostly did did better. They got the, the advantage of the, of the receivers. So that's why you saw Green, you saw Criswell, Malachi. That's why you saw them throwing the check downs, along with ja uh, the, uh, the freshman uh, whose name is slipping my mind. K.J. Jackson. That's why you saw him throwing those checkdowns. A lot of them. I, I feel like Varkey's Gums was like the spring camp MVP because he got targeted so much. So, be on the lookout for that. Watch those guys lined up in the slot. Watch that battle. See if they're going to try and chuck the ball. They want to be explosive. And it's not to say they didn't make those connections because they did. They certainly did. A lot of them were overthrown. And a lot of them were just broken up by the corner or by the safeties. Um but I want to see I want to see them see if they push the ball more downfield. Armstrong this week came back from a hammy injury, really strong this past week. We'll be curious how much he's involved on Saturday. Armstrong, by the way, by the way, confirmed he's a Tusk Talk with Ty viewer, baby. I know there's several players and their parents that watch this show. That's pretty cool. But Armstrong, I'm going to be honest, Armstrong I thought pre-injury was was a pretty he was a good looking receiver he looked the part I can remember bragging on him uh early on in camp obviously he was out with the hammy came back strong this week I really liked what I saw out of him he was active they do these situationals where they'll line up inside the 10 saw him get open I rarely saw him get beat off the line of scrimmage very very powerful to the ball too when he comes back for the ball to make the grab could be a special year for Armstrong Centennial and Broden stood out in the passing game nearly daily. Broden wasn't available this week. Something about family. Don't know what's going on there. No idea if we're going to see him on Saturday or not. It'd be a damn crime not to see him. 
Uh, Broden really, really uh, was difficult for the secondary to handle. Made some outstanding grabs in camp. Another guy that just – I mean, if I if I didn't know anything about him, if I didn't know, you know, he's a transfer or whatever, if I didn't have all the numbers from last year and what he's done elsewhere, I would look at him and think that dude is an all-conference receiver. That dude is is could be – I mean, he looks like a star. Now, I don't want to jump the gun because – we still got to see what's going on with the quarterbacks, right? And we know they're going to play. The quarterbacks are going to have favorite targets. That's just that's quarterback to wide receiver 101. That's offensive identity 101. Quarterbacks will have favorites. That's why some of the best offenses, the quarterbacks had multiple favorites. You know, guys like Torrey Holt and, uh, and uh, Isaac Bruce, just going to say a couple names to throw out there. Kurt Warner definitely liked those guys with uh, the St. Louis Rams when they went on their Super Bowl run and then some, but – uh, or won their Super Bowl. Greatest show on turf, baby. What a fun time to be alive. But, yeah, I I, I really like – all those receivers I thought were strong. They had strong camps. I want to see this carry over into the fall. And then probably last but certainly not least, the biggest question, how does Arkansas's front five look? Now, we're only going to get the ones in the first half. I think beyond, this, beyond that, it's just going to be twos and threes. But uh, the, 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 the five guys up front, let's see how they look, see how they pan out. Arkansas, they've got, some, they've got a little bit of depth, I think, in the defensive end spots to some degree. Maybe that's – they have capable depth, I would say, at defensive end. I don't know so much about their interior. I, I did like what I saw out of Cam Ball. I, th- I, thought, Cam looked, uh, I thought Cam looked pretty good. But, uh, yeah, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how those five up front line out. Um, where's my list of, oh, here we go. Uh, so your five up front, look for, uh, uh, Fernando Carmona, Tykes Crawford at guard, uh, Carmona at left tackle, Addison Nichols at center. Thought he did a pretty good job. Joshua Braun at right guard. And then probably Keyshawn Blackstock with the right, with the ones at right tackle. He's going to be backed up by guys like a Marion Harris. A Marion Harris might be a backup at two or two spots on the offensive line. So yeah, there you go. That's what that's what you need to be on the look for, or on or what you need to watch. Is the uh, again, it's 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 keeping on linebackers, the defensive front, what they show you, the multiple looks that you're going to see, offense, how the quarterbacks, if they're pushing the ball downfield or not, how many checkdowns, so many checkdowns through spring camp. Watch for the receivers. Obviously, the tight end group is deep, y'all. I don't know what you're going to see out of Ty Washington. I don't know that he's going to. He might participate. I don't know. He's he's been a little uh, dinged up, but uh, has has looked really good. Obviously, all you can name any of those tight ends; they've all looked very strong. Varkey's gums has really stood out, and then of course the offensive line. So there you have it. All right, I'll give you my final overall takeaway next week on uh, all of spring camp, and of course my takeaway. I'll get, I may just do that tomorrow. I don't know. I'll, I'll at least have a post scrimmage post scrimmage live that I will do one way or another. Uh, it may be immediately following the game. It might be when I get home when I got all my notes and I can just kind of get it all out there. I might do a huff and puff tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Um, you do a good job, Ty. Of course, players watch. I appreciate the kind words, Patrick. I thought that was cool though. He walked by me Armstrong. I didn't know who it was at first. He just said, what's good, Tusk Talk? He just kind of jogged by me. I get every once in a while, I'll get a player, like, hey, what's up, Ty? You know, it's pretty cool. But, yeah, that's the first from from Armstrong. It was pretty neat. You'll get parents. I always feel bad because I'm, even at the scrimmage, like I'm there to get footage, you know, and sometimes you'll get someone walk up to you and you're like, oh, I'm sorry. I had a, someone in the crowd. I try to go back to people who who say my name. I try to go back if I can find you. Or if I'm if I can remember to and and say hi to you, but uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you guys and uh, I appreciate you watching, and you know me, I'm always excited to 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 talk a little Razorback football. I know basketball is it right now. That's what everyone wants to focus on. Um, I mean, you know, when you start pivoting to football, people just kind of peel away, and that's fine. I'm gonna do it though. It's my it's still my favorite sport to cover and talk about. Um, how's running back look so far? It's look. I mean, it's look good. I, I don't know how else to put it. Like, I, I do think they're going to have a thousand yard rusher or someone who's at least capable of doing it. 
I, I like I like I like Jackson, the Utah transfer, Augusta, who I, I don't know where he's going to end up in the in the uh, in the order of things. Braylon Russell has looked strong. I mean, Dom John had an incredible catch the other day at practice. By the way, he can catch the football now. You can see why they wanted him at tight end a little bit. I mean, he can catch the ball, and I don't think he's afraid to lay a hard block either. I wonder if we see them do that again with him, try to move him back to tight end. But I doubt it. They're so deep at tight end, they don't need to. But, I, I listen, they've all looked good. Jackson, to me, at times has looked the best. Augusta just looks fast. And I'll tell you something else. Taylor Green, quarterback, when you watch him, when you watch him elude defenders and turn the Jets on, you see the athleticism. He's not Matt Jones, okay? I'm not, he's not 6'6", 242, running 4'3", 7". But he could turn the Jets on. He can move. And like Bobby Petrino said about Lamar Jackson, you didn't really know what you had until you saw him in full speed, full pad, full contact when you're bringing him down. I think that might be a little bit of what Taylor Green's about. Now, last year, Boise State had just a cluster of an issue with, with the quarterback situation, the coaching situation, the offensive coordinator situation. I don't know that it's fair to hold what happened uh, last year there against him, but then we did see him ball out in their championship game. I feel like Petrino is going to take the best of that and try to apply it to what he does on offense. And I think there's some truth to that. Now, obviously, they're not going to tackle him to the ground tomorrow. We may not really know what we have in green until the lights are on and until guys are trying to tackle him to the ground. So keep that in mind. His overall passing, uh, his passing percentage numbers through spring camp was not great. But again, this is a guy who I think wants to improvise. I think he doesn't mind. He'll look for the he'll look for the throw. He'll he'll go through his reads. I watch him. Petrino's on him about going through his progressions. You see it in camp. You see the helmet moving. Sometimes if you're close enough, you can kind of see the eyes looking downfield. My vision's not that good. But I, I could certainly see him moving his helmet. And I heard someone else say this. One of the photographers said, yeah, I was watching his eyes in that shot. He's moving his eyes. So he's going through his reads. And that might have been something he didn't do so well. I know they want to work on his release a little bit. Uh, Petrino has mentioned that. So, or at least just on his overall throwing technique. But I, I, I think there has been some progress there. But I don't know that we're going to know much until the lights come on and it's football season. We'll see what it, We'll see what transpires. We'll see what happens. It all, it all comes down to the offensive line, what they allow this offense to do, and what Taylor Green can do with the offense if the offensive line gives him the opportunity. you gotta, you got to have a run game. they got to be strong there, and I think they'll be all right. We'll see. Um, again, it's really hard to tell, especially when you're practicing. You're watching them practice against the same guys day in, day out. These are guys they sweat together with. They bleed together with. They know each other's tendencies. They understand each other. It's just that's why I always say – it's, it's difficult to take a lot from spring camp in, in a red-white scrimmage or any scrimmage anywhere. But now because of the portal and because of instant eligibility and all this stuff, there is more. Like we now we know coming out of spring camp who the starting quarterback is. You know, uh, we have a pretty good idea of what's going on up front on the line of scrimmage. We have a pretty good idea of what's going on there, what the 2D might look like. Because of the reset, we're actually coming out of this spring knowing a hell of a lot more about about what they what they uh, what they're doing, what they're trying to do. There's more to talk about. Last year you didn't have as much, you know. But I also liked what I saw then too. So that's why I say take what I say with a grain of salt. Take what any, what anybody says about spring camp and afterwards with a grain of salt. Until you see them against UAPB, uh, Oklahoma State, whatever. That's when we know what this team is really all about. And the same thing last year. I said it last year and the year before. So all right. That's going to do it. Go watch that baseball game. I'll be watching it. Uh, I, I was invited to go hang out with Woo Pig. I think they're somewhere in, in northwest Arkansas. I don't know that I'm going to be able to make it. Today he just kept getting pushed further and further back. Maybe I'll see him tomorrow at the scrimmage. Uh, or if they're doing whatever they're doing late enough, maybe I could stop by wherever they're at. Uh, I'd certainly like to meet those guys in, in person, get to know them a little bit better. But, uh, yeah, so – if you're at the game tomorrow, feel free. I'm going to be sitting there probably by myself, probably uh, taking some notes on my phone. Feel free to walk up, talk a little Razorback football or basketball with me. I always enjoy seeing you guys out and about. Okay? All right. Um, I appreciate you, and I will, uh, I'll see you guys, if not tomorrow, during the post game. 
or post scrimmage. I'll see you next week. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys. And you fans, but I'm going to try. And you fa-